When playing video games, certain missions always stick out as the hard ones. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, let's talk about the 10 hardest missions of 2019. Starting off at number 10, Operation Paladin, the Spec Ops mission from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. People started complaining about how hard the Spec Ops mode in Call of Duty Modern Warfare is pretty much from day one, and for good reason, they dump you into a very open map, surround you with constantly respawning enemies, and give you very little ammo to deal with them. The mode on its own is incredibly tough, and Operation Paladin is arguably the hardest mission of an already insanely hard mode. It doesn't start off so different from your standard Spec Ops mode. You run around this big empty map, enemies seem to spawn in at random, and you're constantly low on ammo. But then you get to the end of the mission where you need to defeat an APC by just standing in the middle of the road and getting sniped by the endless horde of the respawning aimbot enemies. Before you have to defend a box in a really hard to defend area, not once, not twice, but three times in a row, with the last one literally dropping two enemy tanks on your head. Yeah, they get airdropped. The mode is so hard people have just given up on it, and Operation Paladin is a perfect example of why. Moving on to number 9, the Division 2's first raid, called Operation Dark Hours, is a grueling 8-man trek through the Ronald Reagan airport, and it is not messing around. It was so hard that at release, many players on console complained it was literally impossible, as in, could not be done. It was eventually finished by console players, and Ubisoft has since tweaked the difficulty a little. But the raid still remains probably the most difficult piece of content in The Division 2, and there's no denying that console players are at a major disadvantage. If you're wondering why, it's because it demands very precise aiming and quick turning skills. The first boss out of four total that you have to face is called Boomer. He forces you to have to quick turn to be able to do any real damage to him. Obviously, this is difficult to pull off without a mouse, and especially not running at 30 FPS, which the console versions will dip below on a constant basis. And the final boss of the raid, the Razorback, forces player to perform some very precise shooting and grenade throws in order to beat him. The Division 2 is already a pretty grueling game by default, but some of the boss mechanics in this raid are just plain cruel. And at number 8, Borderlands 3's Circle of Slaughter. Now, Borderlands 3 can be pretty tough on its own. I'm looking at you, pain and terror. But it's the Circle of Slaughter missions that are particularly nasty. Doesn't matter which one, the Cistern of Slaughter, Slaughter Star 3000, or the Slaughter Shaft, which you may be detecting a theme in the naming convention. Which slaughter is this again? Whatever! Go f*** it up! They're all a huge pain to complete, and there's a very simple reason why. They're too long. Okay, that's not the only reason they're hard. These missions work the same way they did in the previous Borderlands games. They're arenas where you fight waves of enemies. They were always tough, but never something I'd feel like putting on a list like this. It's just that Borderlands 3 really overtuned these things into just these long slogs where you're struggling to have enough ammo to get through them, and enemies take way too many hits, and you just take too few, and it's just the worst. The only saving grace of these things is that they're totally optional in every way, so if you want to avoid them, you can. But if you're a completionist, obviously, sucks to be you. I put all my hopes and dreams on you, and you f***ed it up! And at number 7, Death Stranding's Order 68, the Cryptobiote Delivery. Oh yes, I can say that word. Death Stranding is a weird game, and not just because it's a weird story or weird characters, but the gameplay is just weird on its own. Yeah, the main goal is delivering packages. It's a package delivering game, and it's strange that exists. Now, at first, you wouldn't think that would be too hard, but the game, of course, finds a way to make things difficult. Like, there's a mission where you have to dispose of a nuke. That's an actual thing that happens. That's not the hardest mission, though. The hardest one is Order 68, Cryptobiote Delivery. You need to deliver this medicine across the map, but there's a lot of it, and it's very, very fragile, so it's not sealed. And at this point in the game, there's pretty much constant rain. It's called Timefall, too. Not regular rain. It's rain that does constant damage to your equipment. So you have to move fast because your package is taking constant damage. <laughs> but don't go too fast and trip, or don't go through any deep water or slip in a stream. On top of that, you're having to avoid the ghost-like BTs, which will absolutely ruin your day and ruin your package. And that still sounds funny if they get a hold of you. And if that's not enough, you have to fight a boss just before the end. It will absolutely take every bit of patience that you have to finish this, period. And at number six, in case you've actually played Anthem, <laughs> Get glitched. 
There is a hard mission called the Heart of Rage, the Stronghold. Anthem's main endgame content, the Strongholds, are short raid-like co-op missions that end with a boss and promise the best loot. It's all pretty standard, looter-shooter crap. But in Anthem's case, there's a whole lot of frustration to go along with it, because A, it's Anthem, and B, it's the hardest and worst Stronghold in the game. What is it? You unlock it after completing the final campaign mission, and it's just the final mission over again, tuned up to be challenging for four players. It's pretty lame, actually, but at release, it was the best mission to get the best loot. So what makes the Heart of Rage so hard? Well, it's just a slog to start. It's not long, but the bosses are a drag. First a titan, an enemy who's never fun to fight. But the game forces you to many, many, many times, and then the Fury, who teleports around like crazy. It's the final boss of the Stronghold, the Monitor, who's the worst, though. It's the last boss, but with way, way more health. And here's where the real challenge of Heart of Rage comes in. Just finishing it. See, the players began to notice something. The end bosses of Strongholds never drop legendary loot. Chests can, random enemies can, but not the end bosses. So people just stopped fighting them. They'd run the Heart of Rage, beat the first two bosses, open the chest, get right out. Just fighting the monitor can easily double the amount of time it takes to finish a stronghold. He's so hard and the rewards you get for beating him are so bad that players just skip him altogether. Either by not fighting him at the end of the mission or by not playing Anthem. But that's created a secondary problem and then all these people quit before the boss. It's caused players in the Heart of Rage queue to just spawn and the monitor fight often by themselves. It became increasingly difficult to even join a Heart of Rage stronghold at the start just because so many players wanted to just open the chests before the boss. And then there's the fact that just enjoying Anthem is so unbelievably difficult. Oh, you, you look a little green. And on to number five, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3's level 65 ultimate mission, The Black Order. In Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, if you want to unlock Thanos as a playable character, you'll need to complete every mission in the Lambda Drift, the set of missions that unlock after beating the game. The final one, Ultimate Mission The Black Order, definitely lives up to the title Ultimate Mission because it is hard. Why? Well, you have to fight the entire Black Order. Not all at once, thankfully. Remember, these guys are the main bosses of the game, so they're really tough on their own. But if you want Thanos, you're going to have to fight them all at max level. It's basically impossible without a lot of grinding, and you're going to have to be at least close to their level. You're going to need at least some of the overpowered heroes in the game. And even so, it's an endurance test, and one or two slip-ups will set you right back at the beginning. There's really not a whole lot to say about this one. It's just a really tough mission. And if you want a chance at playing around with the awesomely overpowered mad god himself, Thanos, you're going to have to bite the bullet and finish it. And at number four is Control's Polaris, which is the final part of the Hedron Chamber. Control can be surprisingly tough at times, even on normal difficulty. So combine the fact that you're pretty fragile and have a high probability of death with an absolutely brutal gauntlet of enemies, and you've got the mission Polaris, specifically the final part of the Hadron Chamber. It's basically just a giant empty room with these floating arenas, and you've got to get through them. If you die, you go all the way back to the start, and believe me, you will die. The enemies are relentless, and they give you very little health between encounters, so it just gets tougher and tougher as it goes on because the enemies get more aggressive. Really, it's the lack of checkpoints that make it so hard, but it's legit one of the hardest parts I think any of us can remember playing this year, and in a year with a lot of hard games, that's saying a lot. Moving on to 3, Ace Combat 7, Skies Unknown, Mission 7. Ace Combat 7, the new entry in the highly regarded arcade air combat series, is no stranger to hard missions. Some of the PS2 era titles can be absolutely brutal, and Ace Combat 7 continues with that very same old school mentality. This is the mission that has you destroying ground targets and drones while avoiding this gigantic mountainous shaft that makes things very difficult to maneuver around. Add in low visibility with heavy clouds, rain and lighting, and turbulent wind and you've got a recipe for frustration. Throw in the second part of the map where you have to rush around, rescue your allies from enemies, which forces you to go so fast it's impossible to win if you're in the wrong section of the map when it starts. And it may not be the worst mission of the series, but it's a perfect storm of annoying ace combat elements. You got your stage hazards, your weather hazards, hard hit enemies, and invisible time limits. It is the worst. And at number two, 
the Outer Wilds reaching the Quantum Planet. Now, the Outer Wilds doesn't really have a traditional mission structure. As you progress the game, you do discover a variety of objectives, and probably the most mind-melting one, however, is reaching the Quantum Planet. Now, I won't talk about how you actually go about doing that a whole lot, because a big part of the game is discovery and puzzle solving, but I'll say that once you're able to put together the disparate clues scattered across the solar system and actually solve this crazy puzzle, you feel like a friggin' genius. Hell, just getting to the Quantum Moon will make you feel that way. It's one of the toughest, most mysterious puzzle games in years, and getting to this physically impossible place is such an awesome achievement. And if you didn't cheat and you didn't look up the solution online, it's really hard to do, so you better feel good about it. And finally, at number one is Ukulele and its impossible lair. The titular impossible lair is no joke. Looking at the cartoony art style of the game, you might think that it can't possibly be that hard. But it is. Well, okay, it's not impossible, but it might as well be. Three long, trap-filled sections and four increasingly hard bosses make it for an absolute marathon of pain. And did I mention? No checkpoints. If you die, you start from the beginning. Yikes. The only way you can possibly get through here is by collecting most of the 48 battalion bees, which act as hit points for the impossible lair. 48 bees equals 48 hits. You might think that is overkill, but you'll need every single one if you want to stand a chance. This place is significantly harder than the rest of the game and is hands down one of the hardest challenges of any platformer, bar those insane Kaizo Mario ROM hacks and Mario Maker levels, those are nightmares of their own nature. The Impossible Lair really does live up to its namesake, and that alone is pretty impressive. What were some of the hardest missions you played this year? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and if you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.